Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. I'd like to thank one of my good friends, Dina, for this hat that I just got from her on a recent trip that we were on. And I feel kind of inspired in it, so I thought I'd wear it while I do a channeling. I'm actually going to channel, as you know, here at Above Life channel, we connect with the afterlife, with celebrities, and we learn from their insights and their reflections upon their lives. And today we go to old Hollywood. One of my favorite eras is old, the golden age of Hollywood. And today we're going to channel James Dean. Okay, so I always get, people give me a hard time for this when I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. And it is, I can't think off the top of my head about that much about James Dean. I know he was young. I know he died and I think it was a car accident. I know he's a popular actor. That's what I know about James Dean. Okay. He was before my time. Let's just be clear on that. He was before my time. All right, so I'm gonna connect with Mr. James Dean. Oh my goodness. Nice energy. I'm already giving my husband content for future psychic boyfriends videos. If you haven't seen that, go look at the video list and look up psychic boyfriends. We did this kind of funny video thing, my husband's idea, he did it for Valentine's Day. And James Dean is very, his energy is good looking. And he feels kind of like a Paul Walker, but of his era. If I could describe your energy, I would describe it as a combination of Elvis, that charming kind of sweet boy next door mentality, but then a little bit of a wild side, a rebellious nature, and a little bit of a Paul Walker. And maybe it's because you both died in automobile accidents. That is an interesting connection which leads me to want to ask you also about past lives. Because why would instantly, as, as, as I am a psychic medium, I connect with you, James Dean, and I wanna call you Jimmy. I totally don't wanna call you James, I wanna call you Jimmy Dean. Except that's like <laughs> a brand name, product name. <laughs> oh, if you're a James Dean fan, please do not put hate comments. <laughs> I'm going to do the best I can here. All right. But I feel a major connection between James Dean and Paul Walker. I mean, they feel very similar, almost like one and the same. Some of you, do you feel that, you guys? As you, if you're sensitive, clairsentient, do you feel that? So James has like lighter hair, a little bit where it's frosty on the tops, and got a little bit of the sideburns going, a leather jacket, and he's in a car that is like a kind of like a Corvette type car. It's a small car. I don't know if it's American though. It might not be an American car. A small car and it's like a, um, it, it can be convertible or not convertible. Like they come in hard top or convertible form. I don't know what kind of car it is, but I see that. And I do know intellectually, um, I want a James. I'm gonna call you James, but I don't feel like I should. I should call you Jim is what it feels like or something. But. I'm gonna to try to call you James. It doesn't feel quite right though, you guys. I gotta be honest, it doesn't feel quite right. He says, that's not my real name. Okay, so James Dean is not his real name. All right, that helps. Um, okay, so, and cigarettes, I can see cigarettes. I can actually kind of smell it, to be honest. I can smell the tobacco kind of scent, almost like a camel cigarette. Like if you guys know about cigarettes at all, camel kind of has a stronger scent. That's what it smells like. And he says, yeah, he says, yeah, yeah, if I didn't die of, uh, of uh, reckless driving, he says, I would have died of lung cancer, he kind of says. He also shows me drinking, like um, hard, hard liquor, like a whiskey. Um, not a scotch, I think it's a whiskey, actually. This is like a glass, a little glass with a little bit of like a bourbon or a whiskey in there. It's a darker color, but it's not super dark. It's not like a scotch, it's different, it's lighter than that. Um, and I see that, but I don't, know if, I don't know if alcohol was involved in his accident. I think he was just reckless. He's, he's saying reckless driving is what he's saying. Um, 
he's showing me an image of like playing chicken with other cars, like where you're racing and you come toward each other and then you pass each other, whoever turns away quicker. And I don't know if that was in a movie. I'm feeling like that was in a movie. He says, I was in a lot of movies. He said, I was in a lot of movies. So I had a few movies. He said, I was actually filming a movie at the time of my death, is what he says. He tells me he has a brother and he's showing me his dad for some reason. I don't know if he is estranged from his dad or what the deal is, but he's saying dad. But he's showing me, I have a brother and then he's saying dad. And then he says, um, there's a name Tom. I think it's Tom, not Todd. It's T-O. I think it's Tom that comes forward. I'm not sure who that is or what significance that is. If you know and you're a fan of James Dean, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Um, I'm kind of looking at him and I'm seeing him. He seems larger than life. He kind of feels like a, a male version of a Marilyn Monroe. Um, did you have a difficult upbringing? Yes. He says, yeah. He says, he says, uh, well, he says, yeah, yeah. And then he says, but you know, your life is what you make it. He says, like, he's not blaming anybody for his problems. He, you know, just, he takes accountability for his, his life. He's not blaming anybody else. He's something about, um, it looks, I'm not sure what this is. I don't understand this. So James, I'm getting this vibe of very wealthy, like Beverly Hills, very wealthy, expensive houses, all that stuff, fancy cars. And then I'm getting this contrast of like poor, um, like neighborhoods, like down south, like Mississippi or something where there's like very rundown portion of uh, rural kind of land area, but it's not really rural. I don't want to offend anybody that's watching by giving examples of cities that are kind of run down, but kind of like a Detroit almost, like after the auto industry left and like the parts of the city are just really run down and stuff. It kind of feels like that, like he's giving me this major contrast of this life versus this life kind of a thing. Um, he shows me being angry and getting into fights and that it was a problem for him because of his movie contracts or his contracts or something that because he couldn't get, he had to keep his face pretty. He couldn't mess up his face. He's like, just don't hit me in the face, you know, kind of a thing. And I really feel, I want to know, are you connected to Elvis? Do you, did you know Elvis? Were you a fan of Elvis? He says, a fan. He says, everybody's a fan of Elvis. He says, who's not, who's not a fan of Elvis? And then he shows me Mississippi. So I don't know if that's a commonality or what the deal is, but he's showing me that. Um, I actually saw him. He said, I actually seen him play. Okay, at a concert or something. I seen him, I seen him is what he says. Um, and then I see like the airplane crash, the, the one with uh, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens and the Big Bopper. I see that too for some reason. So I don't know if there's a date correlation. I think that was in like January or February or what the significance of that is, but I also see that. So did James, did you sing? He said, I played. He's showing me playing like a guitar or something. And maybe in movies, he may have been depicted as someone that was a singer. I'm not sure, but I don't know that he sings, but it looks like a guitar. Either that or he's very interested in it. Like I see like Memphis and Tennessee, Mississippi. I mean, I see like this Elvis kind of vibe going on here. So I don't know if James Dean, if you were a big fan of Elvis or what the deal is, but there's some kind of correlation there. All right. Um, so did you have any children? My husband always tells me not to ask about that. <laughs> He's like, don't talk about their family. Let them talk to you about their life. Um, I don't think so. It doesn't feel like there's any kids. Um, and I feel like you were a heartthrob. I think that's probably common, right? Is that well known? I think so. But I'm not 100% sure about your, um, how do I say this? about your preferences as far as attraction, like men or women. Um, I think that you had kind of a persona of being attracted to women, but I'm not 100% sure that I buy into that. Um, but I'm not saying the opposite either. I'm just saying I'm not sure. It's not clear to me. But he's heartthrob. I can see that. Is there something specific, James, about your life that we should know about? that you would want to give advice to other people about life based upon what you know about life. What kind of information would you like to share about that? 
live fast, die young kind of thing. Like, um, he says, it's not, it's not my place to give advice. He says, he said, he says, um, my life is an example of what not to do, is what he's saying. He says, don't follow in my footsteps. He said, don't follow in my footsteps. He's kind of saying, like, don't be stupid. You know, don't do stupid things. So did you not value your life? Did you not recognize that you were, did you feel like you were immortal, like you could do anything and nothing bad would happen? Or did you just not value your life? What's, what, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, and he's like smoking. I can smell the cigarette and I can see the smoke kind of come out. He says, um, it's not a matter of uh, value. It's being at a point in your life when nothing really, nothing's really, nothing seems real. Things don't really seem permanent. Everything is just temporary, like you're just passing through. Everything is just passing through. Like you know that sooner or later all of it's going to end. And it feels like you really don't have a lot of control over any of it. You're, you're really out of control. And he's helping me to feel like the out of control energy is about his career, like you didn't have control over your career. He says a lot of the choices that I made weren't really my choices to make. So in other parts of my life, I looked like I was wild or reckless because it was the only way I could feel like free, you know, away from the public eye. Like I'm really not, he says, I really wasn't interested in all the, you know, fame is, is, is kind of, he's trying to say it, fame is overrated. It's not, he's a man of very few words, you guys. He's helping me to feel the energy. He expresses energy more through the way he looks and his, his, his eyes and his, structure of his face and the way he turns his head that's how he's conveying information to me not as much the words so when i'm articulating the information from D james dean to you i'm utilizing the sensory imagery so the clairvoyant channel the clairsentient channel and a little bit of the clairaudience but if we were going to talk to james dean he'd say like five words okay man a few words <laughs> and he kind of laughs he says <laughs> he says that's right says you're right and I see him drinking a coke he's holding a coke like a bottle of coke and he's drinking a coke hmm. I feel like he's an advertisement for coke like did you do ads he was a model I feel like he was a model or had the opportunity to do advertisements and modeling that's how I started started as a model I feel like that's how he started I'm thinking that's how he started um, like at a side of a, rest a restaurant or a place where you drive up and you order your food and stuff, like in your car, like that kind of thing. Like I see him just hanging out like outside a restaurant and drinking a Coke and then like kind of getting discovered kind of thing or something. Something like that. There's some kind of significance to that. Although I could be seeing an, a page in a magazine that he's showing me, you know, he could be showing me that. But I feel like there's modeling here. Um, So you feel like fame. Talk about being famous. Talk a little bit more about that. Is it worth it? He says, yeah, yeah, yes, for me. For him, he's saying, yes, yes, it was worth it. He says, what else was I going to do with life? When you're given an opportunity, you take it. You take it. He says, but you got to be careful who you sell your soul to. And he's showing me like agents and managers and people take money from you and they want pieces of you and they take such a percentage. The, the film and the, uh, the production companies, he says so many people get a cut of you. It's, and he says, it's not that I'm not grateful. Okay, he's like, I don't wanna seem, I don't wanna come off like I'm not grateful because I am grateful. But I just, I can't, I didn't expect it to last. And he's making me feel like it became obvious that he wasn't in control of his life. And that was really difficult for him. Very difficult. I also feel like there was a love. That he had like a love that he lost. Like he loved someone, but that love didn't work out for him. 
And so I don't know if he was in love with someone and she left or if he died when they were dating or together. I'm not sure. But there is a woman. And it looks like somebody with darker hair, with brown hair, a brunette. Um, so I'm going to share that with you as well. All right. So he's saying something about my car, like my car on display. Okay, so I'm not sure, but his car, the actual car that he died in or the accident occurred in, um, feels like it's on display somewhere or there are big chunks of it somewhere. I'm not sure if you guys know about that. Put in the comments below if there's a museum or something that has a part of the car, or pieces of the car, the actual car itself, or maybe even a replica. Will you type that below so that we know? Don't put any links though. If you put a link, it'll the spam filter will catch it and it won't even be posted. So, all right, James Dean, is there anything else that you'd like to share with me? Yeah, he's like, fame is not all that you expect it to be. It's easy to look at things from the outside and see it one way and think you know, but you really don't until you get into it. And then it's a completely different world. It is completely different. And he says, again, I don't want to seem ungrateful, but you got to really know what you're getting into. Like, be careful of what you wish for because you might get it. Okay. All right. So could your death have been prevented? He says it could have been prolonged. It could have been put off a bit. The timeline, the sliding scale of time, it could have been pushed out a bit, he says. So did you know that you were going to die? He said, yes. Yes, I knew I wouldn't live to be an old man. I just knew, you know, he says, you kind of have a sense about things and you know. So was your death a suicide? He says, no, not intentional. I didn't intentionally do that. But my crazy actions, yeah, did I cause my death? Sure I did, but it wasn't a suicide. I didn't, I didn't, and I didn't try to kill myself. But if it happened, I mean, I figured it, eventually I was going to die at some point anyway, so. But no, I wasn't trying to kill myself. So, is there anything else you'd like us to know? He says, no. He said, thank you. Thank you. He's calling me ma'am, which makes me feel really old. I'm thinking you're in your 30s, early 30s. No, you're younger than that. I don't know, late 20s, 26, 28, 30. 26, 28, 30. He makes me feel really old, okay? You're making me feel a little old. <laughs> All right, you guys. So that is it for our channeling session with James Dean in the afterlife. This is Bridget from Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope because this is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks so much for watching, you guys.